So we are learning about this uh, type one uh, reaction that is anaphylaxis type of reaction. So here, <coughs> anaphylaxis or immediate uh, hypersensitivity reactions. So this is the <coughs> most dreaded type or most uh, scary type of anaphylactic reaction, which is a life threatening. Within few minutes, we may lose the patient. So that is the negative point here. <coughs> So here, uh, the drug or the metabol metabolite interacts with the IgE molecule fixed to the cell, uh, particularly tissue mast cells and the basophil, basophils and leukocytes. So this triggers a process that uh, lead to the release of the pharmacological mediators that is histamine. So as histamine is the primary agent which is causing the, this type of reactions, we have the natural antagonist of histamine that is adrenaline, which is synthesized within the body. But now here to avoid this reaction, we use it, we use it externally. So the physiological antagonist of histamine, that is adrenaline, is used in the treatment of this type 1 reactions. So the 5-HT kinins uh, and aristogenic acid de derivatives, which causes this uh, all type of allergic manifestations. So manifestations are in the form of urticaria, rhinitis, bronchial asthma, angioedema, and anaphylactic shock. So this uh, type B, these are or anaphylactic, it's a serious type of allergic reaction that is uh, rapid in onset may cause death, typically results in a number of symptoms including itchy rash, throat swelling, low blood pressure, all these things are seen. So on pathological level, anaphylaxis is due to the release of the mediators or the uh, So the primary treatment here is the injection of epinephrine and other uh, suppression of the complementary mechanism. That is the using of the uh, steroids. We commonly go for the hydrocortisone. Antihistamines also we try. That is H1 antihistamines uh, like uh, uh, cyprazine and all, and H2 antihistamines like ranitidine. All these are tried to suppress this reactions. So anaphylactic. Uh, anaphylaxis signs and symptoms are in the form of uh, uh, generalized hives, itchiness, flushing, angioedema, all these things are seen. So uh, respiratory shortness of breath, wheeze or strider. So in the first uh, part of this class, I have shown you the uh, diagram where the uh, larynx goes on uh, swelling. So there will be strider at the end stage or when the larynx has completely inflamed. <coughs> So what are the causes, how we can prevent it, what uh, all these things we need to learn. So they can, this anaphylaxis can be due to anything, okay? It is not the drugs which are always causes, but drugs have the more propensity to cause this reaction because we use a parenteral route where it can reach the systemic circulation at a faster rate. So anaphylactic reactions due to injections are more common rather than the oral medications. So it can occur in response to the almost any foreign substance so common trigger includes a venom from the insects, uh, insect bites, sting, food, medications, all these things are possible. Physical factors, exercise, biological agents like uh, uh, hormonal changes. These things can also cause the allergic reactions. So food additives, all these are possible. Pathophysiology here is release of the inflammatory uh, mediators and cytokines from the mast cells and the basophils. So typically due to the uh, immunological response, IgE plus antigens activates the FC portion on the mast cells and the basophils. Lead to release of the histamines causes contraction of the bronchial smoke vessel. So management of anaphylaxis, we have this uh, uh, epinephrine or the adrenaline is a primary treatment for the anaphylaxis with no absolute contra indications. So it is given IM into mid anterior lateral part of the thigh as soon as diagnosed. So the injection is repeated every 10 to 20 minutes. So if there is no response, so adrenaline is commonly administered. If there is no response, you are giving it for every 10 to 20 minutes. The second dose is administered after uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Then if we are any response is there, we will stop using this drug.
so management of anaphylaxis so people ban beta blocker can uh, may be resistant to the uh, some of the effect so in that case iv glucagon can be administered so we are using antihistamines both uh, h1 antihistamines and h2 antihistamines corticosteroid hydrocortisones we are using uh, nebulization of salbutamol to prevent the uh, 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 hypoxia due to this uh, laryngeal stridor and all and uh, some of uh, the secretions will be there and the person will be drenched in his own secretion so nebulization with uh, salbutamol will help in clearing the airway so use of uh, airway breathing circulation <coughs> any disability is there support that part to prevent the further exposure so that means it will be a b c d e approach to treat at the primary level so type 2 reactions that is uh, cytotoxic reactions the circulating antibody of igg igm or iga class they interact with the antigen to form to form by the haptase So IgG, IgM, IgA class interact with the antigen formed by the haptones. Uh, so the complement is then activated and cell lysis can occur. So here the reaction is in the form of thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, uh, phenidine or phenyl. Then coming to the type 3, 3 reactions, that is immune complex reactions. So uh, IgG antibody combines with the antigen that is the hapton protein complex in circulation. So the complex does form is deposited in the tissues. So the complement is activated and damaged to the capillary endothelium is seen. So here in type 3 reactions, the antigen antibody reactions type is seen. So the complex will be deposited that can cause this allergy type of reactions. So the serum sickness is a type of uh, typical adverse drug reactions. So penicillin, sulfamides, antithyroid drugs, all these can cause this type 3 type of reaction. So coming to the next type of reaction, type 4 reaction, it is again a cell mediated reaction. So here T lymphocytes are sensitized by hapton protein antigen complex. So there is an inflammatory response when the lymphocytes come in contact with the antigens. So example here is dermatitis caused by the localized between topical antibiotics or antifungal cream. So pseudo-allergic reactions can be seen. So the term is applied to the reaction that resemble the allergic reactions clinically, but with no immunological basis. That means so there will be no uh, reaction within the body, which can turn it into a serious, uh, serious adverse event. So here we can see Here you can see that uh, asthma, skin rashes uh, caused by aspirin, all these are seen. So type B photosensitivity type of reactions, that is the uh, phototoxic and the photoallergic reactions. So here photoallergic reactions, we have mainly the tetracyclines which can cause this type of reactions. Other drugs which commonly can cause are the drugs accumulating in the skin absorb light to give photochemical reactions, that is the photobiologic reaction. Erythema. So we have this uh, erythema. Uh, erythema. Edema blisters or this things can be seen. The photoallergic reactions are uh, the drugs with cell mediated immune response, contact dermatitis and exposure to lights. The, there we have the examples like the sulfonamides, grisophalin, all these can cause this photoallergic type of reactions. So type D or phantogenicity type, the our class started with this uh, thalidomide, which can which could cause this uh, phocomania. Uh, this thalidomide is a drug used for morning sickness or to prevent you know, hyperemesis in pregnant females. So, drug used uh, phenytoin, it can cause this uh, cleft palate. You know, uh, phenytoin is an anti convulsant drug or anti epileptic drug. So, oral epiglycemic drugs 
they can cause this neonatal hypoglycemia, tetracyclines, they can cause this anomaly of teeth and bones, carboric acid, neural to detect. Warfarin, it can cause this uh, skeletal and CMS defects, carcinogenicity, mutagenicity, all this can be seen most commonly with the anti cancer drugs. <coughs> Prevention of EDR, how we can avoid this EDRs. So, uh, avoiding of the uh, EDR is uh, not so much easy as we speak because uh, we may not be most of the time knowing this this may go for allergic reactions but yes of course yes in case of this uh, our uh, pharmacological uh, drugs uh, which are commonly known to cause allergic reactions for example we told us the sulfur drugs can cause type 1 uh, allergic reactions or anaphylaxis so these sulfur drugs are commonly are used as antibiotics anti leprotic drugs then we have this uh, tetracyclines which is most commonly used uh, uh, empirical drug which can cause this photoallergic or phototoxic drug. So like this, we know some of the drugs which can cause a particular group of uh, symptoms and signs. But along other than that, we have idiosyncratic type of reactions where we will not be knowing what the drug may cause because it is not dose related. So, so we, what we can do uh, with all these uh, shortcomings is we should avoid using inappropriate drugs or uh, minimize as much of the drugs which we are commonly using okay then um, to use the right dose root and frequency for example like uh, nowadays people are taking a lot of uh, azithromycin tablets cybermethine tablets which they actually don't know how to take what to take when to take all these things but people keep on using these things similarly we have newer drugs in the market due to covid uh, remedy seller uh, had come now monopinavir uh, uh, has come so so many new drugs are coming in the market they are uh, uh, there, but we actually don't know what type of reactions they are causing. So we should be cautious uh, when the new drugs are in the market. So use of right dose that is there. Then elicit medication history. So in the medication, whether this drug was previously uh, introduced to him, because if previously introduced and there it has caused some reaction, means now we, there will be a reaction which will be more in a more aggravated way. So at least is the history of allergy to the specific medication. Some tell we are allergic to macrolides, we are allergic to penicillins. They people themselves will come and tell about this. We should be patient enough to hear them. Then <clears throat> we have to rule out the drug interactions. There are so many reactions which are commonly occurring. So that we have to rule out. Then adopt the right technique of medications. Uh, what technique we are using this uh, medications that is a uh, parenteral route. So carry out adequate monitoring that is the uh, pharmacovigilance. Then uh, using the periodic safety update reports, that is if the drug is there, new drug is there in the market, we have to take periodic safety update reports so that these uh, uh, drugs uh, causing reactions can be prevented. So uh, we will end our class with a note that uh, all substances are, are poisons. Where if we know the right dose, this poison can become a remedy. So similarly, in uh, our uh, Patanjali's uh, uh, you know, Ayurveda also, they have told that all medicines are poisons if we don't know the right dose. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. <coughs>
So in the exam, so we can expect three marker questions from this topic. So what are the three marker questions we are uh, expecting is uh, the first uh, we can expect is uh, what is type one arrest of the action or anaphylaxis they can ask you. So other than that, uh, they will ask you about uh, what is, uh, uh, what are the uh, different types of allergic uh, drug reactions. So you should be able to write the classification. So what is uh, type, uh, type one, type two, type three, uh, what is uh, type A, B, C, D, E. So A, B, C, D, F is first important. Then within the desired type or B type, we have the subclassifications. <coughs> So they can ask you just a simple question, name two drugs you drawn from the market due to adverse drug reactions. So such simple kind of questions can also be asked. You should be at least remembering five drugs and five uh, reasons why this drug was removed from the market. So type A is very important for you. So type A reactions, uh, how it is, uh, prevented all those things that is a uh, treatment of anaphylactic shock you should be uh, able to answer so here in uh, type b we have this type one there we have this anaphylactic shock so that thing should be able to remember and uh, memorize how we treat this anaphylactic shock So idiosyncrasy can be short notes for you. What is idiosyncrasy? How it occurs? Is it uh, genetically determined? All these things you should be able to write. So two examples you should be able to give. Streptomycin causing deafness with single dose, then barbiturate causing exaggerated and mental confusion. So these are the uh, bizarre type of reactions. So then uh, gel and cook classification, you should be able to know what is type 1, that is IgE mediated, type 2, that is IgE, then uh, type 3, immune complex, type 4, that is cell mediated. So treatment of anaphylaxis is a short notes for you. First, we are administering the uh, epinephrine or adrenaline. After that, uh, we'll be starting with the antihistamines that is H1 and H2. As I told. So H1 and uh, H2 antihistamines, that is uh, H1 antihistamines, we have this uh, uh, citrazine, neocitrazine, all those things. Then H2 antihistamines, we have this ranitidine, sinitidine, all those things. So both are used. Along with that, we are using a steroid that is a hydrocortisone, 100 milligram IV stat. After that, we can be use this uh, nebulization with salvetamol. Uh, use of uh, UBCD approach, that is airway, breathing, circulation to prevent the disability, prevent the exposure. So we have a microbiology class so next. Uh, sorry is asking us to join to that class. Okay, okay. Thank you all.